Within the small council, there are seven official members with their own titles and jobs. There's the Hand of the King, equivalent to a vice president in our real lives. The Lord Commander of the King's Guard has a seat on the small council, alongside the Master of Laws, Master of Coin, the Master of Ships, and Master of Whispers. The Grand Maester of the Citadel also has a spot, as the representative of the Citadel in Old Town. At the beginning of the story, the small council that Ned joins is filled with some of the more prominent characters. Sir Barristan Selmy was the Lord Commander of the King's Guard, and even though he fought against Robert Baratheon during his rebellion, it was Robert himself that promoted him from a King's Guard member to the Lord Commander. He was the most loved and honorable member after all. Similarly to the small council, the King's Guard is made up of seven people, since that number is holy in the prominent religion of the Seven Kingdoms. And of course this religion is called the Faith of the Seven, referring to the seven parts that make up the god they pray to. This job is essentially a king's head of security. They're usually one of the best fighters in the Seven Kingdoms, if not the best. I doubt a lot of the advice the Lord Commander of the King's Guard gives is taken as seriously as some of the others, like the Grand Maester or the Master of Laws, since this role requires more brawn than brains. They probably spend most of their time coordinating the royal family's security when they're not on the battlefield. Robert also kept Grand Maester Picel around after he served the Mad King. Humbly beg your pardon, my Lord Stark. Grand Maester. How many years has it been? You were a young man. And you served another king. Pycelle served the Targaryens for a long time, actually. It was during the reign of Aegon V, 40 years before the story begins, that he was appointed to this position. Grand Maesters have generally been older men, but since they kept on dying so soon after being selected, Aegon wanted a younger Maester to be chosen. The last one died before he even made King's Landing, so a 42-year-old Pycelle was selected. A new Grand Maester is decided between the most accomplished Maesters of the Citadel to represent them and counsel a king. Pycelle served three Targaryen kings before Robert usurped the throne. After Aegon V, there was his son King Jaehaerys II, and then his son, the Mad King Aerys II. Only the ones who elect the Grand Maester can remove him from his seat on the small council. So I guess Robert didn't have much of a choice in keeping him around. But a king can do whatever he wants. Maesters are this world's scholars and doctors that serve the realm. That really shouldn't have any loyalties, but Pycelle has always been a loyal supporter of the Lannisters. Tywin was an effective ruler in the time of the Mad King. While the Mad King was becoming more and more erratic, it was his hand Tywin that kept everything together. The idea that everyone looked at Tywin as the true ruler of the Seven Kingdoms over the Mad King bothered him. Eventually Tywin was done with the conflict between him and the Mad King and returned home to the Western Lands. He didn't even support the Mad King when Robert's Rebellion was going down. Towards the end, he marched his army into King's Landing, and Pycelle convinced the Mad King to open the gates for them, which led to the Lannisters sacking the city. In order to protect Cersei and Jaime's secret incestuous relationship, Pycelle allows John Arryn to die when he could have saved him from the poisoning. Till tomorrow, my lord. I've been hoping to talk to you about John Arryn. Lord Arryn? Oh, his death was a great sadness to all of us. I took personal charge of his care, but I could not save him. His sickness struck him very hard and very fast. It... The position of the Hand of the King is already a rough job because of all the responsibility, but John Arryn had it even worse. He was the Hand for almost all of Robert's 15-year reign as king, and he relied on John to do everything for him. A king usually heads the small council meetings, but Robert didn't even attend those. This belongs to you now. Should we begin? Without the king? Winter may be coming, but I'm afraid the same cannot be said for my brother. <clears throat> His grace has many cares. He entrusts some small matters to us that we might lighten the load. We are the lords of small matters here. John Aaron, who was a good man, and the true ruler for Robert, but even he was being manipulated by his wife, Lysa Tully, and she was being manipulated by the man she truly loved, Peter Baelish, aka Littlefinger. Lysa talked John Aaron into giving Peter control of Gulltown's customs, which is one of the largest cities in the Seven Kingdoms. Peter was so successful with bringing money in that John brought him to work at King's Landing, and three years later, he was in the small council as a master of coin. The job is pretty self-explanatory. They handle the king's money and collecting taxes. They also deal with finding money when the royal family runs out. When Robert went out of hand with all his spending, it was Peter that indebted the Seven Kingdoms to the Iron Bank of Bravos, constantly requesting loans, a very dangerous thing to do, since they have a very brutal way of getting a return in their investment. Are you telling me the crown is three million in debt? I'm telling you the crown is six million in debt. How could he let this happen? 
the master of coin finds the money, the king and the hand spend it. If you are unable to make your payments, the iron bank will financially support your enemy, and the debt will then transfer on to the new ruler. We see this when they support Stannis and his war to become the king. Peter's conniving rival is Varys, who served as a master of whisperers. This was the last job to be incorporated into King's Landing. All the other jobs existed when the first king, Aegon the Conqueror, was in power, before the small council was officially created. They were just called advisors at the time. It's only until Aegon the Conqueror's grandson, King Jaehaerys, that he officially named it the small council. Aegon's younger son, and the third king, Maegor the Cruel, had one of his wives, Tyanna of Pentos, serve as the first master of whispers. She was feared because of her suspected use of magic. After she confessed to poisoning Maegor's other wives so their children would be stillborn, King Maegor cut her heart out himself. Another efficient master of whispers who used magic was Brendan Rivers, better known as the Three-Eyed Raven. Before he became the Hand of the King, he was probably the greatest spy master in the series. We don't know if he knew he was a green seer before he met the children of the forest, but it does seem very possible. Varys' web-like network of spies working for him in Westeros and Essos earned him the nickname of the Spider. The Mad King was extremely paranoid, always thinking someone was plotting against him and his family. He heard about a man in Pentos who became very wealthy from information gathering and offered him a position of Master of Whispers on his small council. But Varys only worsened the Mad King's paranoia. Varys was too valuable for Robert to not keep around. After his rebellion, there were two young Targaryens still out there that could one day threaten his rule and Varys was the best way to keep an eye on them, while Viserys and Daenerys grew up in Essos. Robert's two younger brothers held the other two seats on the small council, even though he didn't really care for them. Stannis was the master of ships, and Renly the master of laws. Renly is the youngest of the three, and was only a child when Robert became king, so he probably hasn't held this seat for very long. We also know that he lived and ruled over the Baratheon's home of Storm's End before moving to court, but there is no mention of Robert's previous master of laws. The roles of this job include overseeing the king's justice, the dungeons, and the city watch, which are basically the cops of this world. The king's naval power is called the royal fleet. The master of ships overlooks it. The fleet is docked at King's Landing and the island nearby Dragonstone. It stands at home at the beginning of the story, but once the Targaryen seat. The master of ships has to be a powerful military leader since they command all the ships in times of war. A perfect position for Stannis, who always understood his duty. They also are responsible for building and maintaining the fleet along with finding men to work and fight on them. There's been so many Valerions that have held this position that it was almost hereditary while the Targaryens ruled. The very first master of ships was a Valerion, and there have been five names so far in the story, six if you include a bastard. But I'm sure if George Martin went out of his way to name every single one, there would be a bunch more Valerions. The Targaryens relying on this family makes a lot of sense. They're also a Valerian family that left their home before the Doom could destroy them. They were nowhere near as powerful as the Targaryens since they don't have dragon-controlling magic running through their veins. When the Targaryens migrated to Westeros, House Valerion, who lived close by on Driftmark, were one of the first sworn to them before they even became kings. Valerian dragonlords usually stick to incestuous marriages to keep their bloodline pure, but when they do marry out of the family, they commonly select House Valerion. Driftmark is a small island, so being surrounded by water must have made them capable sailors. There have been times where others outside of the seven roles sat on the small council. They were just considered advisors. When a king isn't of age yet, like Joffrey or Tommen, a regent will rule in his place until they are 16. A regent will sit on the small council like Cersei has been doing. Duran Martell was offered a seat as an advisor on the small council, but with his poor health condition, Oberyn Martell was sent in its place. These meetings aren't always going to be this early, are they? I was up late last night. So, does this mean I am a master of something now? Coins, ships... Lord Tywin and I already determined that I shall be the master of ships long before you... Lord Tywin, it's a great honor to have been granted a seat on this council. I... Trial begins this But after his death, his eldest daughter Nymeria is on the way to King's Landing to replace him in the books. In the recent books, there have been a crazy amount of changes in the small council. Barristan was given the boot to promote Jaime Lannister as a Lord Commander. Tywin became the Hand. Then Tyrion served in his father's absence for a while, until he was given the role as Master of Coin after Littlefinger left. So all three Lannister siblings and their father had a spot for a short time. More replacements are found after Tyrion kills his father and runs away to Essos. So yeah, that's the small council. I talked about the Kingsguard a little bit in this video, but if you want to see me go more in depth on the topic, I did a video on it a while back that you can click or tap on now.
Thanks for watching this one, guys. I'll be back with another one soon.